Guys, if you're anything like me, looking at maps has always been a huge part of my preparation and execution for my outdoor adventures. I have been using GoHunt digital maps on desktop and mobile for quite some time now. I have used these maps for years with, for my in-depth e-scouting tactics and my methods of using offline maps during the hunt. Well, now I'm happy to report GoHunt maps now covers all 50 states. There's two ways to get the Go Hunt map. You can sign up for a Go Hunt Insider membership and get the benefits of all the draw odds, harvest statistics, unit breakdown, strategy articles, as well as access to the 50 state maps, plus savings on gear for being an Insider member. Like right now, they're doing double points. For an Insider membership, sign up now at GoHunt.com, use the J. Scott promo code, and get a $50 Go Hunt Gear Shop gift card just for signing up. You can also just sign up for a Go Hunt Explorer membership, and that gives you access to 50 states for 50 bucks. Use the J. Scott promo code. Guys, also, don't forget to get a 10% discount on gear at the Go Hunt Gear Shop by using the J. Scott promo code. You can also reach out to my friend Cody Nelson of 20 plus years, either by phone or by text, 602-399-3699. Make sure you tell him I sent you. I want to thank GoHunt.com for their loyal sponsorship of my podcast. We're over 815 episodes in, and they've been with me for, since the beginning. I also want to thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting for their sponsorship of this podcast. They provide the gear that I use on all of my hunting adventures. You can go to the Kuyu website directly, kuiu.com, order directly. They're a direct-to-consumer company. Uh, they make the best gear in the in the hunting industry, and I've been a loyal supporter of theirs for years. Also, phonescope.com. Go to phonescope.com. Use the J. Scott or jscott22 promo code and you're going to get a 10% discount at Phonescope. Guys, thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for, for supporting me. If you have any questions or you'd like to send me a comment, the best way to do that is on my Instagram account at jscottoutdoors. Again, let's get right to this episode and thanks for your support. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today I've got Pat McCarty of Shadow Valley Outfitters. Pat, how you doing? Doing really good, Jay. A little wet right now. We're hunting antelope and we just got rained out, but we're doing good. You know what? It's always great to hear it's raining in Arizona. It looks like about the next 10 days, there's anywhere from a 30 to 80% chance of rain every day. Um, that's good news, right? It's not when you're trying to kill antelope, but it's good for, for our animals. Yeah, it's great news. And uh, if you look at our monsoon uh, up to this point, you know, we're almost double our average rainfall for monsoons all the way across the state. It's, it's really phenomenal. Um, so conditions out there, you're out there in the field right now. I know you've been out looking at elk and such. How are things looking across the board? Looks really, really good. Um, this monsoon has had a tremendous um, uh, impact on, uh, you know, the grass crop. Um, and then also, we're seeing a lot, a whole lot more fawns, fawn recruitment. I expect to be a lot better uh, for the, the 2022 year. Um, a lot of the antelope are, are still carrying twins around beside them uh, up on the Kaibab. A lot of the deer, the fawn recruitment looks really good. And I'm seeing a lot of fawns for elk too. So um, I think it's going to be really good. And then you pair that with some of the, the tag cuts that were made across the Kaibab strip and, and some of the other units. It, I think it's going to be a really good thing. Yeah, um, for sure. When when you look at, uh, you know, these animals having a lot of twins, and and you know you're observing twins. I mean, I've that's just directly related to moisture. It, it, it it's animals. It's the does. It's the moms feeling good, and 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 cycling and getting bred and having twins. Would you agree? I agree, a hundred percent. And. I think it goes back to when you think about, you know, we had a late monsoon last year, but that really set the grass crop up for a strong winter. Um, the does and the cow elk were super healthy. So the rut was fantastic and they were bred multiple times. Um, you know, I think on the elk, you know, they, there was probably a, a several three or four extra cycles for a lot of these cows. Um, so man, I'm really, I'm very happy and it's amazing what, you know, just one or two good years of moisture can really do for, for animals across the state. Great. Um, I want to talk elk specifically right now. Um, how do you think antler growth is going to be uh, 
above average, average, below average, where do you think we were going to be on elk specifically? I think we're slightly above average um, to this point from what I, what I've seen is just slightly above average. Okay. And, you know, so, so take a unit like unit nine, um, where you're going to, on, on a decent year, you're going to see a good group of 350 to 375 type bulls and then a few upper uh, tier bulls. I think on a year like this, you're going to see some of those bulls that were 330, 340, they're going to touch that 350 mark just because they're healthy coming out of the winter. They got good monsoons, they got good moisture. And then those other bulls, that's just going to help them even more so. Um, some of the bulls that we saw last year that were really close to, you know, being being uh, on, on the, the list for us that just didn't quite make it. Now this year, it's like, okay, for sure, we're going to hunt that bull. Like that bull looks really good. He's very solid throughout. Um, so I think, I think across the state, we're slightly above average. Okay. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. We'll just kind of shotgun through some of the units. Um, and I want you to tell me what you think kind of the high end bull will be out of each unit, unit 10. I think you're going to see some giants come out of there this year, Jay. 400, I think you're 400 gonna, type? I, yes, I do. There will definitely be some 400-inch bulls killed out of there. What yes, about, for sure. What about nine? Same thing. It looks really, really good. There's a handful of bulls that, if they stay on huntable land, they're, they're going to be very, very impressive. How about uh, eight? Eight, uh, you know, I think if you're hunting unit eight on the archery tag, and you have a 345, 350 bull walk by you, you need to consider shooting that bull. Even on a wet year where moisture is going to uh, have a better impact on horn growth and the rut activity, it's still, there's a, still a ton of tags. It's a finicky unit. If you get heat, it's going to shut things down. So still consider that. On that early rifle tag, I think you should be looking for something 360, 375-ish. Okay. Uh, seven West. You know, I, I haven't done much in there this year, Jay, but seven West will pull bulls from nine. Seven West will pull bulls from 10, as you know. Um, so I, I, you know, go in there looking for 350 plus. Okay. Um, let's talk, you, you mentioned the Kayabab. Let's shift gears, talk about deer. Um, this monsoon moisture that we're getting right now the deer are still packing on the inches where the elk are rubbed and it's it's over for them as far as antler growth how much do you think this say next 10 to 15 day forecasted moisture that we know about is going to help them uh what i think we're so i think you know uh, genetics i think plays a huge role in just getting the frame of the deer where it is you know and then from there when they get at that extra nutritional boost where they they've got the resources that they need I think that's where you're going to start to see how that, that fun stuff, the, those little cheaters and kickers and inlines and stuff like that. Um, and some of the video that we've been able to get this year shows, shows just that. Um, some bucks that didn't show it last year, um, that this year are, are showing some pretty cool character. Um, I don't think this rain could come at a better time for the Kaibab and the deer herds. Uh, it looks really, really good. I, it's, it's, it's getting better every year for like the last three years. What about the Arizona Strip? What are you hearing there? So Bob just came back, um, and we had a we had a really really good scouting. Um, I think we're still lacking age class, you know. But I, this is going to take three four years to get the strip where it needs to be again. And without cameras, without all this other stuff, that that's going to happen. Are there some big deer? Yes, there are. There are some some very big deer up there still. Um, and I think you're going to see those bucks get killed on the archery hunt and, and then going into the rifle hunt, we'll, it'll kind of be a barometer of, you know, what's left, but what's lacking is not moisture this year. It's just age class getting that built up again, but it's still the strip. Uh, go in there. If, if you're doing it on your own, go in there looking for something 200 plus and you know, you'll have a great hunt. Okay. Um, you mentioned that you're antelope hunting right now. Where do you see this, the condition of antelope, uh, in the, in the grand scheme of history in Arizona? It's down for sure. Um, yeah, they're running like crazy right now. I mean, they are, there's, uh, we got one doe or, uh, yeah, one hot doe right now where we're hunting 
and there's seven bucks chasing her. <laughs> and you go to the next, the next, you know, draw, and there's five bucks chasing a different doe. And it's extremely fun, very, very exciting. We're having a blast. Uh, it's very difficult when they're running, you know, half a mile in each direction, chasing each other, and then chasing a doe. And it's a blast, and the conditions are great, and the animal animal health is great. But you know, like in 19B, for example, just loss of hunting area, and then the encroachment of development mixed with the proficiency of archery and the proficiency of muzzleloaders over the last five to seven years, we've killed a lot of really good bucks. And now we're, now it's, it's a little bit tougher to find good, good bucks. It really, it, I mean, that's unfortunate, um, but that's the, definitely the case. It used to be on every hunt in the state, a book buck was, was doable. That's not the case anymore, is it? No, it's not. Um, and it's really disappointing. I, I'm really sad about that. Um, but, you know, like this hunt that we're on right now, there's there's a couple really nice bucks that would be a Pope and Young type buck, but they're on private land, and the landowners do not allow access at all on some of these pieces now for one reason or another. Um, and, you know, so, like, this one is where we're just like, okay, out of, out of these five bucks that are all going to score – real within an inch or two of each other which one do you like the look of yeah. all right now let's go hunt that one and that's what we're doing you know um so and i don't i don't see a quick fix to this at all because you know they're not going to cut tags on this stuff in 19b they'd be more likely to just shut the unit down um then it, there's just there's way too many tags versus what we're actually seeing for uh good quality bucks i was going to ask you what is the fix for the antelope in your mind just cut tag numbers right yeah i mean that, that's the only thing i mean when you consider on this hunt there's there's five archery on the first hunt there's five archery on the second hunt and all but the four archery hunters were hunting the same pasture opening morning one of them had access to private land and he was he was up north and the rest of them were all in the same area and it's like well for five tags you know you might as well have 50 um so you got to cut tag numbers because there's five here five on the next one then there's like seven or eight on the muzzleloader hunt and then there's 25 on the rifle hunt and the rifle hunters at that point i mean you're looking at a 70 inch buck you know in what used to be you know one of the premier units of the state right. so yeah they've they got to they got to cut tag numbers and i don't think they I, you know i don't know i don't want to you know jump to conclusions but i don't think the proficiency of muzzleloaders and the proficiency of archery equipment is being taken into consideration anymore because it's unbelievable. Um, let's bounce back to the Kayabab. You mentioned that there's kickers and lots of fun stuff going on. Um, do you think this will be one of the banner years on the Kayabab? And do you think it's continuing to trend in the up upward angle? I absolutely do. I think this year has uh, potential um, for some great bucks to come out of there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe some of the raffle or auction tags get taken out of there. Um, it, it looks really good. There's a, there's a handful of bucks, you know, that just knowing about them on the late hunt, you know, unless they, unless a lion got them or something like that, uh, be really, really impressive deer this year. Um, so I think, you know, going into this archery season, there's going to be, you know, the archery up there, it's hard, you know, so take that into consideration but i think there's gonna be a handful of really nice deer that get killed on the archery there's you know there's still a lot of hunters that go up there and they're like hey i just want to kill a buck and, th and they'll have that opportunity um but then going into the, this the early rifle that late uh or the mid-season muzzleloader hunt that's one of our favorites that's going to be a phenomenal hunt i think i think you'll see some big deer get killed on that there's few hunters good opportunity and then that late season tag, I think people, if you got a tag this year, this is the year you want to hunt. Uh, unless you have a health scare, something like that, uh, do what you can, re rearrange your work schedule, do everything you can to, to go hunt. If you have the tag, try not to point guard, because I think you'd be disappointed if you don't. I mean, and with the moisture that we've had the last two monsoon seasons, you know, last season and this season, it, it's very easy to be already looking forward to next year, is it not? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, like all of the ponds, you know, um, are, are full. All of the little seeps, all the little springs they're producing, 
Um, and then just the grass crop alone and the moisture content in the soil is very, very impressive. Uh, it, you know, like, you know, if you take unit nine, it's like one of the most arid places in, in the state, as far as like holding moisture content, you know, I was up there last week and I, it's like, man, I need an airboat to get around this place. There's, there's standing water across the place. Um, and elk are spread out and there's elk around every corner, whereas they're not bunched up, you know, around these, these trick tanks and stuff like that. And you're seeing the same thing on the Kaiba. You're seeing the same thing on the strip where they're not reliant on that stuff. So they're not having to travel. They're not being, their body isn't being stressed because of conditions. Uh, it looks really good. I think the Kaibab is like, say, I, I wish I had a Kaibab tag this year. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that goes for the East side and the West side. I mean, equal moisture yeah. in both places. Both look great. Yeah. And uh, to me, yeah. Um, and you know, uh, James Vine, uh, does 90% of our stuff up there. Um, and he's very, very excited about that. He's, um, uh, you know, there's, he, he's very excited about a few deer. Um, you know, so he's seen a lot and he's done a lot. So when he gets excited about a deer and he tells me, uh, you know, Hey, I'm finally videoing deer. And instead of just telling me about it, you know, that's exciting because it takes a lot for him to, to really, uh, get his blood pressure up. Great. Um, we've got the archery strip hunts, uh, archery deer hunts up there on the strip. Bob just got back. With as much moisture and tanks and everything spread out, um, it's going to make sitting water pretty tough. Wouldn't you agree? It sure is, Jay. And, like, you know, that's conducive to what we do because we're primarily spot and stock anyways. Um, so our scouting is typically the same as, you know, how we would go about our hunts. And, you know, Bob is able to go up there with a few guys and they're able to locate some really good deer that were not near water sources. Um, and they were, you know, kind of in out of the way places because they're comfortable there. They've got all the food they need. They got all the water they need. Um, and they're not having to travel or they're not having to stay close to water sources, you know, um, because ever since last winter going into it, you know, on the rifle hunt up there last year, it was green, like green, green grass. And so they had that good health going in the winter time. It wasn't super wet, but it wasn't horrible. So it wasn't, you know, uh, a bitter cold and it wasn't super deep snow or anything like that. So they really weren't stressed out throughout the winter. And then they go into the spring, they're healthy, good monsoons. I think it's going to be fun. Um, I think people, you know, if you're going up there on that strip hunt on the archery hunt and you're planning to sit water, I think you're in for a long sit. Um, just because deer don't have to water. There's so much green grass. There's so much moisture in the ground and there's, so much dew on the grass in the mornings that they don't, they don't really have to go to water necessarily. Um, you know, they may do it out of habit or they're close by or something like that, but they don't have to, I don't think. One last question. I'll let you get back to antelope hunting. Um, with the, with the trail camera ban in place, how do you ultimately think that's, that's going to play out? Let's say over the next three to five years in animal quality. So, We've talked a lot about uh, what we've what the trail camera ban is going to do. I think what's going to happen now is on both the elk hunts and the deer hunts, guys are going to go in there and they're going to see a bull or a buck, and they're going to say, "Hey, I really like that deer." And you know whether they know how to score or or not, they're going to see it and they they like it and they're going to shoot it and they're going to you know and they're going to walk up there and they are going to be thrilled to death with that deer, no matter what it is, because they don't have the image, the, the trail camera that, you know, oh, it's the buck that has the left side dropper and they're looking at this. Well, it's not him. So they pass, you know, when they should kill the deer because they're going to be very happy with it. So you're going to, you're going to have a different class of deer getting killed. The, the top tier bucks are not always going to get knocked out because they don't have, you know, 20 mercenaries trying to kill them. So they're going to get a chance to breed. They're going to get a chance to reproduce. We're going to get, there's just going to be some deer that are not known about and bulls that are not known about, they're going to continue to breed. It's going to bring the age class up. It's going to bring a good, strong genetic class back. Um, there's a lack of information now. Um, there's still going to be some guys that go up there and, and crush it and kill. And then there's going to be some people that are, are going to get lucky. And I'd rather be lucky than good anytime. Um, <laughs> but I'm excited. I, I, I know that there's still a lot of heartburn and, and there's this and that about it, but, 
I'm looking at the positive in this thing. And I think like for me personally, I'm sitting on enough bonus points to draw the archery tag. I'm going to wait three to four years because I think it's going to be a really, really fun hunt, not knowing exactly what every single thing is out there. Um, so that, that's kind of where I'm at personally with it too. I think it's a good thing. And I think we're going to see an increase in age class. We're going to see strong genetics brought back. Um, it's going to be good. Pat, it's always great having you on the podcast. Uh, let the listeners know how they can reach out, how they can follow you guys. Yeah, you can find us real easily, uh, Shadow Valley Outfitters on Instagram or Facebook. And you can always give me a call at 928-533-1903. And I uh, hope everybody has a very successful hunting season this year. Awesome, buddy. Look forward to seeing you guys' success. And go, go, uh, go dry out and get on those antelope tomorrow, okay? Thanks a bunch, Jay. Have a great day. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.